Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com and in this video we will review our understanding of normal distributions. The normal distribution refers to a family of continuous probability distributions described by the normal equation random variable y is equal to 1 divided by sigma square root of 2 pi times e to the negative random variable x minus the mean squared divided by 2 sigma squared where x is our random variable this is our mean and sigma of course is our standard deviation now the graph of a normal distribution depends on two factors the mean and the standard deviation now the mean of the distribution determines the location of the center of the graph and the standard deviation determines the height and width of the graph. So we're concerned with two factors that determines the graph of a normal distribution. So if the standard deviation is large then the curve is short and wide so we'll see a, a standard or a normal distribution something like this and that's when the standard deviation is large. Now when the standard deviation is small we'll see more of a, uh, a, cr a curve that is tall and narrow so something like this and this is when it's small. Now as you can see all distributions are symmetric all normal distributions are symmetric bell-shaped curves now this one doesn't necessarily look symmetric but uh, the normal distribution curve is symmetric now the normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution this has several implications for probability number one the total area under the normal curve is equal to one so the the area under curve is equal to 1. Number 2, say that we have a distribution, normal distribution curve such as this. This location is notated as A the probability that the random variable x is greater than a equals the area under the normal under the normal cor curve bounded by a and 2 plus infinity so this area represents that the probability of random variable x is greater than a now the probability that the random variable x is less than a is represented by this area right here. And that is the area from a to minus infinity. Now we will use the normal distribution tables in the reference manual to determine what these areas are, but I just wanted to define uh, some general terminology regarding normal distributions. Now every normal curve regardless of its mean or standard deviation conforms to the following rule. So let, let's draw a normal distribution curve again. Something like that. This is symmetric. This is where our mean is located. Now the, every, st every normal curve conforms to the following rule. Say this is one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right. Now 68 percent of the area under the curve falls within one standard deviation of the mean. So 68 percent of the total area under this curve falls within one standard deviation. Now say this is two standard deviations here. and it, for every normal uh, curve 95 percent of the area falls within two standard deviations of the mean 
and finally for three standard deviations we know that 99.7 percent of the total area under the curve falls within three standard deviations so this is just a basic rule also you can uh, you might have heard it as the 68 95 97 rule and that's just saying that 68 percent of whatever data if it's normally distributed is going to fall within one standard deviation of the mean um, and talking about the same data 95 percent of that data is going to fall uh, within two standard deviations and so on so just remember that rule now to find the probability associated with a normal random variable we use the z-score and the normal distribution table so when we're, we're talking normal distributions we're concerned with the z-score whatever that is and the normal distribution tables which these are going to be found in the back of your reference manual or your review manual whatever you have but there's always normal distribution tables so with these two resources we can determine the probability associated with some random variable now every random variable can be converted into the z-score using using the following equation z is equal to the random variable x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation now once we uh, get a value uh, for the z-score we can go to the back to the normal distribution tables and we'll find a table a big table that looks something like this z will be here up in the le upper left corner and there'll be whole value whole and tenth values here in this first column so there'll be a bunch of values but say we'll see 1.0 1.1 1.2 1.3 and so on all the way down so we'll see whole values with their tenth uh, num uh, associated with them. Now in the upper row we'll see uh, the, the values of the hundredth place so it'd be like 0 .00, 0 .01, 0 .02, 0 .03 and so on. Now in the meat of the table we'll see uh, areas or probabilities and so these probabilities are the area under the normal distribution curve which represent the probability of some uh, of uh, some of the z-score. So say we have a z-score of 1.1 1 .1, uh, 1 .11. So to find that in the normal distribution table we go back we we first uh, search down this left column and find that 1.1 and then we search our top row to find the hundredths place which is 0 .01 and we just work our way down the row until we find whatever value will be right here in that table. Now let's just say that value is point, say, 0.51. Uh, so what that's telling us is that on a normal, normally distributed uh, set of data points, say that we have a z-score right here of 1.11, the area or the probability of a normal random variable falling below that number of 1.11 is equal to 0.51 so the area right here is equal to 0.51 or uh, the probability so that shows that the probability that a certain random variable falls is less than uh, 1.11 of course we may not be interested in the probability that a standard normal random variable falls between minus infinity and our z-score or our random variable value. We may want to know the probability that it falls or lies uh, between a given value, say 1.11 and plus infinity, so we're interested in what this probability is. Or maybe we want to know what the probability is that it will fall between two given values, say this is 0.7 uh, and we're interested in what the area is between those two points. Now the normal distribution tables only give us from the area or the probability from minus infinity to a certain value. However, we can use that data to determine uh, our desires to either find a value greater than or a value between two, uh, two uh, values. So let's say we want to find a, a probability that a value or normal random variable z 
is greater than 1.11. All we would do is find that normal area right here. We would find our area that z is less than 1.11 and minus that from 1 because we know in a normal distribution um, that the area under the curve is equal to 1. Now to determine the uh, values um, or the to probability that a standard normal random variable lies between two values, say P uh, that Z falls between A and B. All we need to do so to let's visualize this. Here's our normally distributed table, and we have some value Z score here of A and some Z score of B. So we're concerned with this area, and we know that the normal distribution table is going to give us data from negative infinity to whatever value we de uh, we want. So what we do is we find. Uh, the area or the probability in our normal, distribu normal distribution table of that random variable being less than b. So we find this entire area. And all we need to do now is find the probability that that random variable will be less than a and subtract that from that. So we're finding this little part right here. And if we just subtract that from the uh, probability that that random variable is less than b, we will end up with the probability that that random variable will fall between the two values a and b. So it's often events in the real world follow normal distribution. This allows us to use normal distribution as a model for assessing probabilities associated with these events. Now typically the analysis involves two steps and we kind of just explained it but just remember the two steps to analyzing the probability of an event number one we need to transform the raw data into a z-score so we need to transform the raw data which which uh, gives us the mean and the standard deviation into a z-score and once again that and that uh, z-score is given by z is equal to the random variable, whatever random variable that falls within that raw data, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And then simply number uh, the second step is we just head back to the normal distribution tables and use that same process as we just found to determine that probability. So let's run through a quick example to reinforce our uh, overall understanding of normal distributions. Let's say that um, a student scores a 940 on a national achievement test. So he scores a 940 on his test. The mean of the test score was 850. Now the mean of all the people that took the score was 850 with a standard deviation of 100. So assuming a normally distributed scoring, what proportion of students had a higher score than this student? So that our random variable is going to be 940, our mean is going to be 850, and our standard deviation is 100. Now, now our uh, concern is what is the probability that uh, another student tested higher than this given random student? So greater than little z. This is big z, little z. And since we don't have the z-score right now, I can't throw that in there. But let's convert this to the z-score. The, uh, the random variable, again, is 940 minus the mean, 850, divided by 100. And we're going to get 0.9. So again, now, now that we know the z-score, we want to know the chances that a given student scores better than 0.9. Now we just go back to our normal distribution tables and we find that the cumulative probability associated with a z-score of 0.9 is 0 0.8159. So this tells us that the probability that a student is scoring less than 0 0.9, less than our student, is 0.8159 but we want to know what the probability is that a, another random student scores better so what we need to do is minus that probability from 1 
0.8159 is equal to 0.184. So the probability that uh, the student or another student tested had a higher score is 0.184 and that's how we use the normal distribution and the z-score to determine probability. So that's it guys I hope uh, that clears up a little bit or at least reviews the normal distribution a little bit for you. Once again we're concerned with the z-score and the normal distribution tables and we can always uh, use the normal distribution tables to uh, figure out other probabilities like uh, more than a given value or between two given, va uh, given values. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, hop on over to engineerandtrainingexam.com and shoot me some feedback, some uh, suggestions, or just say hi. I look forward to talking to you soon. All right, take care. Bye.